Right, so you've calibrated the throttle position, calibrated the air temperature, the air fuel ratio, air temperature sensors, coolant temperature sensors, everything's hunky dory. You've you're connected, your engine's all wired in, you know, the mixer it's all wired in, now you come to crank it or try and start it. Now the important thing to remember is that the fuel map is not looked at, is not referenced to at all until the engine goes over 300 RPM or the value that you've set in it. So in this case we go on this in MS3 but MS2 and MS1 same you cranking settings the end cranking RPM is the value that the uh, engine needs to go over so the speed the engine will go over before it goes into run mode. That won't go into run mode until it fires and then goes over 300. So once it goes over 300, that will then look at the map and start running off the map. Until then, it will be run off the cranking uh, pulses. And you've also got flood clear. Now flood clear is um, a method to clear a flood uh, by putting your foot flat on the floor, on the throttle, um, you, the engine won't add any, or the ECU you won't add any fuel. Now the thing why I mention that now is some people will sort of try and turn it over, and if you get no pulse width while it's turned over, it's probably because you've got the flood clear set too low. So all your throttle position sensors um, wired up incorrectly, not calibrated. So if you get engine speed and no pulse width, then chance are it's the flood clear. Just set that a little bit higher, so. Um, 70 is normally okay, but um, the only fuel that's added, like I say, is the cranking pulse width off the map. Everything's ignored. All we all we do is we're looking at the engine temperature, that's the coolant sensor, and we add this amount of fuel. In MS1, it's actually a pulse width. So MS1, you set it up for um, the exact pulse width that you want to go in. So you'd increase it in say half a millisecond pulse width. So um, you'd have say 15 to say 3 or 4 milliseconds of fuel going in across and you just increase it a little bit at a time um, trying different values. Now on MS2 and MS3 uh, it's a little bit different in that this is a percentage of the required fuel level. To be honest these are pretty blinking close for most engines these values but if you want to if you feel you need more fuel increase this value so Say for instance we're trying to start it, get it cranking at 31 degrees, so we'll be somewhere between these two points here, so we'll have somewhere between 150 and 176% of the required fuel level gone in. If you want to, if, um, if it doesn't start, just try it a few times, if it doesn't start then try putting your foot on the accelerator a little bit, if it then tries to start by putting your foot on the accelerator that means you're adding too much fuel and you've had to add air in order to get the fuel air ratio right by putting your foot on the throttle. If by putting your foot on the throttle it still doesn't start then you may need a little bit more fuel so you'd have to increase these. So at 31 degrees you're around here so just increase them a little bit and see how you went. Uh, just I'd increase it 2 or 3% at a time, nothing more than that though because um, you'll soon flood the engine. If it tries to start with your foot, again, if it tries to start with your foot when you've got your foot on the accelerator, then you've basically got too much fuel going in, so you need to decrease these values. But that is it. That is the only thing that's looked at until it's running. Until it goes over 300 RPM, that is it. If we had no pulse width, that's the actual fuel that's going at the engine. If you had no pulse width there, then, like I said, you, that could be your throttle position. If I increase throttle position, there you go, no pulse width. So you're not going to. That's never going to start like that. So if you've got engine speed and pulse width, you have fuel going in. Once it starts, that'll f go over 300 RPM and try and run. Then it goes onto the fuel map. Okay. The other thing to check during cranking is the uh, ignition timer. Now you'll need a strobe, um, and you'll need to check the uh, strobe on a. Uh, on your crank pulley, so you need to have made marks on your crank pulley um, around 10 degrees before top dead centre. Generally, an engine will idle and and cr uh, crank, uh, spark at crank, about 10 degrees before top dead centre. 
So in order to check it, um, like I say, when it's cranking you should get 10 degrees here, so you can check the strobe during cranking. So if you get kickbacks and that sort of thing during cranking, and you've got a constant engine speed, then uh, just check that you've got the uh, weather strobe that, the, that is actually at 10 degrees. If you manage to get it running, then um, if you go into basic setup, this is for MS2 and MS3, and uh, more ignition settings. The fixed advance, if you select from use table to fixed timing, then the third box becomes um, illuminated, so you can use that. So you can set in there, well, we're going to set 10 degrees, but you can set 8 or whatever you want to. So now the, t the, ig the ignition table is ignored and it constantly fires at 10 degrees. So once you've put in 10 degrees, press tab and then burn. So now the, t the timing is 10 degrees. So if I just change that to say 6 degrees, burn. Once we get, we'll go over 300 RPM, um, that will run at 6 degrees. In the meantime, cranking advance is 10 degrees on MS2. On uh, Well, this, this hair and this setting on MS2 and MS3. So if you want to change the cranking d angle, 8 degrees burn. Now you can see it's gone down to 8 degrees. And we're going to rerun the fixed angle of 10 degrees as well. Burn. So now once we get the engine running and started, go over the engine speed. Speed goes over 300. The timing is fixed at 10 degrees regardless of engine speed. So the map's completely ignored and it's fixed at 10 degrees. Now we need to check the strobe and see what the actual timing is. Now if it's out on a um, trigger wheel setup, we go into trigger wheel settings and tooth angle 1, tooth number 1 angle, we adjust that angle until on your strobe it shows 10 degrees. So say for instance it's showing 20 degrees, we can decrease this, 30 degrees, this. You'll get a feel for which way it goes, so if it was 40, try it 45 for argument's sake, see if it goes five, you know, see which direction it goes in, and adjust that until you get the actual um, crank firing angle according to your strobe at 10 degrees. If you've got a um, distributor set up, um, you can swing the distributor a little bit to get the timing right, um, or on MS2 and MS3 you can go into um, basic setup, ignition settings and uh, just quickly change this from to basic trigger and you can adjust your trigger angle offset there so in, because it's a, a distributor setup but w with a hall sensor within the distributor like a you know standard hall uh, distributor um, you can adjust the offset there and that offset won't work with the trigger wheel normally you'd be try and get the angle about 60 degrees so the trigger came in about 6 degrees for top dead centre, so that would probably be at 60, and you just trim that until you're on your strobe you've got the 10 degrees. And once you've um, got the ignition right, go back into more ignition settings and change the fixed advance to use table. On MS1, it's very similar. In theory, um, you would go into Spark Spark settings. There's your trigger angle. This is the same for um, w uh, trigger wheels. You know, 36 minus one wheels, as well as um, distributor setups. Um, you change this bottom, the second bottom one up, fixed angle. If it's minus 10 degrees, it, the setting in that box, then it constantly uses the table. So it's running off the table. So in order to check it, if you set in 10 degrees in there, not minus 10, then the um, the table is fixed, so you get 10 degrees according to what the mega squirt feels it should be. Check it with a strobe and adjust the trigger angle until you get 10 degrees on your strobe. And then once you've done that, you can go back to minus 10 degrees uh, on the fixed angle. So it runs, press tab, burnt ECU and uh, that will go back to using the table again.